Welcome to Career Journeys, a series of videos by the Consortium for Public Education. Here we explore the career experiences and pathways of professionals from a wide variety of careers to help you think about the skills you'll need and the paths you might take after high school. Um, hi, I'm Jackie, I'm with the Consortium, and I am talking today with my cousin Kay. So Kay, could you tell us a little bit about what you do? Hi, I am a zookeeper of big cats at the Philadelphia Zoo in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So I have worked with a lot of different species over years worth of time, but have focused on big cats for a little bit more than 20 years. When, I, when we were kids growing up, um, I, I was talking to Kay about when we would be at my grandmother's and we would be playing, I always went for the dolls and Kay always went for the toy horses. Ever since I can remember, Kay's had a passion for animals. So could you tell us a little bit about how you took that passion that you have for animals and turn that into a career? So that's a true story. When I was little, really little, like before <laughs> kindergarten, I was maybe four or five years old, there was actually a cartoon on TV that was made by the same folks who make um, Pokemon. It was a Japanese cartoon about white lions and white lions in a zoological setting. And I was obsessed with being that white lion. That's all I wanted to do when I was little. So um, it was offensive to me that when I was really little, there weren't very many choices on um, animals that seemed real. So I didn't love Mickey Mouse because I didn't think that animals should be wearing pants and talking. So I wanted to play with um, the other characters that seemed more real to me. And I actually grew up to be um, the first keeper of the first white lions in the United States. So um, that were born in a zoo in South Africa and then were flown into the Philadelphia Zoo. So I started out as a five-year-old, kind of obsessed about white lions, then grew up and it actually turned into my um, career. So you have to start out, um, you can't learn about zookeeping or this industry from books or in school. It will support your knowledge, but you can't get it all um, just from the classroom. So it's a really good idea to take all kinds of opportunities to volunteer or to um, be low level staff and work your way up at all kinds of facilities that are related to animals. Yeah, because as I remembered, you started doing that from a pretty young age. I did. So I actually was lucky. I'm lucky enough to live physically close to a major zoo in the United States. So I was able to join their um, junior program when I was about 14 years old. And I've been there ever since. So I started out um, volunteering when I was in lower middle school and worked through um, middle school, high school, college, and graduated with a four-year bachelor degree in a science-related field. And then I'm now um, full-time, I've been a full-time zookeeper for a little over 27, 28 years. So what does a typical day for a zookeeper look like? So it can vary a lot <laughs> sometimes. Um, I work with all big cats. So I work lions, tigers, um, two kinds of leopard, jaguar, puma, cheetah. I have a little tiny black-footed cat, which are actually better hunters um, than any big cat, but they only weigh two pounds. And then I also am going to um, most recently acquire or work with a maned wolf, but I focus on big cats. So we come in in the morning and we have all kinds of safety protocols. So we have to pick up um, our safety tools. Uh, we have a walkie talkie. We, um, you know, wear some um, safety apparatuses. Then we go into the space, check and make sure the animals are with us, that they're where we expect them to be and they're in good shape from the night before. And um, then we do all kinds of things. We prepare exhibits. Um, we had, the day is um, about eight or nine, 10 hours or so. It's a little bit long, depending on what's happening. We stay late um, when guests are coming in in the evening. And so um, we'll prep exhibits, put cats out for a decent part of the day. Um, we feed, we do enrichment, we do training, we raise babies, um, we work with veterinarians. Um, so anything can kind of, you know, change depending on what's happening that day. But you don't get to pet or play, like really touch the animals, correct? Right. So in zoos in um, this country, in the United States, we have 
kind of two types of care, one that we call protected contact and one that we call free contact. So there are a certain number of animals in every zoo that are free contact, and those might be uh, turtles or tortoises, some of the smaller primates, um, snakes, rabbits, goats, things like that. And then there's animals that are protected contact and they're always on the other side of a safety barrier. Um, and sometimes that's a mid-sized fence or wall, like a hippo. You don't, the fence doesn't need to be too high. Um, they're not great jumpers, <laughs> but then uh, for big cats, the fence is, you know, all the way around the exhibit. And so we never do um, go into the same space with the cats. Safety first. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So if I'm a, a, a kid that's like 14 years old and I think I want to do this, what would you recommend that I, I do to maybe prepare myself or to explore a career like yours? So I think that um, the best thing that you can do really is to get involved early and while you're in school. So it can be as early as middle school. Um, you can, there are even opportunities now um, in elementary school if you work alongside your parents at different facilities like um, animal shelters or veterinary hospitals. But as early as middle school, um, definitely through high school if it's possible, and absolutely by the time you reach college. So we would encourage folks to, um, when you're at the high school or college level, to join any kind of um, related program. So like 4-H or um, anything that works alongside a farm or um, veterinary wildlife rehab. But it is pretty important to spend time um, volunteering or on staff while you're getting the education. I don't really know of any large zoo facility in the United States that hires folks that just have the college degree. Um, almost all of us do have four-year bachelor degrees. Um, there are some folks that have their master's, um, occasional PhD here and there, um, but primarily a two or four-year degree in any kind of related field, so anything that surrounds science. But really, um, volunteering, my parents allowed me to take the bus across the city and there was a volunteer program at my zoo um, that started at 14 years old and I learned an awful lot um, doing that. I learned um, some of the skills. People would be surprised at all the things that a zookeeper is. We don't just take care of animals. So I learned some of those skills um, really in middle school and high school while I was um, volunteering. And then I was um, brought on staff as a part-time employee when I was about 16. What kind of skills were those that, that did you learn when you were a middle school student? So zookeepers do a lot more <laughs> than take care of animals. I think people, that's one of the surprising things. I think sometimes when we talk to folks, even um, adult volunteers who volunteer at the zoo all the time are sometimes surprised at that it's not just about animal care. So uh, we do train the animals and that's a big part of the day and the training is really specific. So I teach um, big cats across a fence without touching them, to step up on a scale. They learn to donate blood from their tails um, for me so that we can make sure they're healthy. Um, they take vaccines every year. They um, do ultrasound, voluntary ultrasound. So there's all kinds of training that goes into it. We're also nurses. Um, we have a really excellent uh, veterinary staff, almost all big zoos do, and they'll, they'll come down and prescribe medications with us, but we do, we administer the medications, um, and we would train, I had a lion who had um, an earache a lot, <laughs> frequently, and so I trained her to turn her head to the side um, and tip into the fence so that I could touch the tab of her ear and put the liquid medicine in, um, and so we do that kind of work. Um, we're designers. We have an exhibit and we have to figure out how to place logs and where trees should go. And if you're on the primate team, you do an awful lot of woodwork. <laughs> you move trees and um, hang vines and it's called perching in the zoo world. Uh, it's not my favorite thing to do. I'm not good at it. Uh, but there are, are keepers that are very good engineers. And we're gardeners. We do uh, pool cleaning. We mow the lawns. We plant 
all kinds of plants. We trim trees. We do a lot of tree work, surprisingly. And then when I was in middle school and first started out um, when I was 16, I did a lot of shows and a lot of programs. And zookeeping now is a lot about education. We really are educators. And I can't think of any major zoo where every zookeeper is not required to speak in front of the public. Um, so to, um, We'll do behind the scenes tours with small groups. Uh, we'll stand in front of large groups. Um, we might have to present in amphitheaters. And some of all of that is what I really learned when I was in middle school and high school. I was kind of thrown into the educator part of it. And so I would handle some smaller animals when I was younger, rabbits, chinchillas, snakes, you know, parrots and um, learn how to speak about them. And in 2020, um, conservation education is critical and zoos are at the forefront of that. And so a zookeeper does all kinds of things <laughs> besides just taking care of animals, which I didn't know when I started out. So that, that's really surprising. I assume too you have had to work weekends and nights and some crazy Yes, things. yes. So uh, that's definitely something to think about for sure for somebody who's considering um, the career. We are essential personnel and we do work at the zoo is, you know, the animals are in the zoo 365 days a year. We're not, not all zoos are open every single day of the year, but most, most days. And so, yeah, you'll work on Christmas and you'll work on your birthday and you'll work on Mother's Day and Easter and um, you'll sleep at the zoo overnight frequently when there's um, a hurricane or a snowstorm or um, we had the uh, Pope came to visit a couple of years ago and was in Philadelphia. That's where I'm living. And uh, we had to camp out um, and live at the zoo for five days because uh, the city closed all the perimeter and we couldn't come in or go out. So um, we moved in uh, and it's, it can be hot. You're out in the rain, you're out in the snow. Um, and it's a little bit of a struggle for family to kind of understand how that works with holidays or weekends. Um, it's pretty rare to have weekends off for a while. Uh, you might have Tuesdays and Wednesdays off for a few years. Uh, so it doesn't, your schedule doesn't coincide very easily with your family sometimes. Um, and you might even be split from a spouse or um, children. So those are all things that, um, that, are real and that you would need to consider um, as part of the career choice. Is there anything else that you would like to share or that you think we should know? Um, no, I think that's I think that's mostly it. I think zookeeping is definitely um, an interesting place to be. I would say that um, it's sometimes a nomadic profession because there is often only one major zoo in a city. So if there are not um, positions available to you once you're kind of at the place where you're ready, even if you're working and volunteering at that facility, they may not have full-time positions available and you might have to choose a facility in another city um, and then wait and come back around to the um, city that's or zoo that's closest to you or your hometown. Um, so we get lots of folks from across the country. It's pretty common for folks to move um, from place to place. Um, if you were to choose like being a teacher or um, being a doctor or a nurse, there might be more than one facility available to you in your area. Um, but in, a, in the zoo community, that doesn't always happen. So um, it's definitely an exciting career once you're in it. <laughs> it can be um, very challenging. It's uh, my particular work area is uh, you're on your toes because it can be dangerous so you have to think all the time but um, you should take you know some you know some scheduling into consideration and um, you know working outside and that there is so much more than just working with animals which a lot of people really enjoy some of us are better at some things than others so I'm not a very good engineer but I can train a lion <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay um well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. I really appreciate this, so thank you. Yeah, anytime. For more information or to learn about other careers in the Career Journey series, visit our website and check back soon for our next installment. Thanks! <laughs>